I wonder what the insects want and whether they are what's making the noise. Hey, over there! Whoa! The buzzing is really loud here. Whatever is making that noise must be here somewhere. Hey, Paul, check it out. There's a huge insect on this tree. Cool! Do you think it's the insect that left those dried out shells on the tree? Maybe. It looks kind of the same. And it's not the only one. There are so many of them. Ah! Nash, what is it? Lucky! It's shaking its abdomen. That's what's making the noise. Along with all of the other ones. No wonder it's so loud. What kind of insect is this? I'm looking up insects that make buzzing noises. Look! Grasshoppers. Hmm, not even close. How about this one? Crickets. It's kind of the same, but not quite. And it's not shaking its abdomen to make noise. Well, there's this one. That's it! It's a cicada. It says here that cicadas are the loudest of all insects. Ooh, I'll say. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> but why are there so many of them everywhere? And why do they make so much noise? And why did it just suddenly start all at once? It's like they all just showed up at the same time. It says here that cicadas lay their eggs in the branches of trees. When the eggs hatch, they're called nymphs, and they burrow into the ground. Cicada nymphs can live underground for as long as 17 years. That's incredible. Look at this. When the ground gets to the right temperature, it's crawling out. All of the nymphs come out around the same time. So that's why there are so many of them. The nymphs crawl into the trees, and then, wow. Wow, it's changing. changing! And it's leaving behind an empty shell. Just like the ones we found. But why are they so noisy? I bet they're calling to each other. Right! Trying to find other cicadas. Male cicadas make that noise. It attracts other males and females to the area. All of the males sing together. It says that's called a chorus of cicadas. Lots of cicadas? Lots of noise. Good luck, Cicada. Make as much noise as you need. This is the perfect place. Let's dig. Uh, uh, uh. Very, very gently. Cover up the roots so it has a chance to grow. Oh. <gasps> yep, that tree is a goner. But maybe we can replace it with a tree that's just like it. How would we do that? There's probably another tree like the sapling growing here somewhere. And maybe it would have seeds. So we could plant those. Yay! Which tree is it? So many trees. Trees of the same species have the same kind of leaves. So if we could find a tree with the same leaf, it would be the same kind of tree. It's sort of long, with some squiggly edges. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are eight tips on each leaf. And there's a line down the middle that ends in the stem. I think I found it. It looks like it's an oak leaf. So we're looking for an oak tree. Polos, let's go on a tree hunt. Yeah! Wow! The leaf is just as long, but doesn't have squiggly edges. This has the edges, but fewer tips. Got it! It's got the same edges, the same number of tips, and the same line down the middle. Uh, it's littler. That's because this is a big tree and our sapling is a young tree. That's the one. Now all we have to do is find a seed. Acorns? Are those the seeds? Right. Oak trees grow from acorns. Look. 
look. Wow, sweet. Poor little sapling. Let's try to plant it again. Good Let's idea. Try it. Huh. Yeah. Arm in arm and hand in hand. Everyone across the land. If you want to grow a tree, just plant a seed. Watch it grow, watch it grow. Change the world when you sow. Seeds of love and hope. Watch it grow. See the earth bright and green. Pray the air fresh and clean. Feel the love and hope. Watch it grow. toolbox and take the whole seat apart. Willow, that sounds serious. Too serious. I think we all need a break. Let's go outside. Good idea, Marco. Come on, everybody. Ah, it's so beautiful here. And so calm. And so peaceful. Waddle, waddle. Ah! It's just like the rattle in the polo mobile. Only worse, what's making that noise? Hey, you guys, look up. It's a woodpecker. Oh, wow. wow. It's beautiful. Hmm. I think its feet really help it hang on to the tree. Yeah. Two of its toes face forward and two face back. So it can stay balanced while it pecks and climb the tree. I wonder how many times a woodpecker pecks wood. We could count. Okay, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It says here that a woodpecker pecks 20 times in a second. I'll time us. Okay, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Stop. Time's up. Wow, we can't count nearly as fast as a woodpecker pecks. So why is it pecking? Is it eating the bark on the tree? Or is it digging for something in the tree? Hey, look! Whoa! It's got a beak full of bugs. That must be what it eats. Insects that live under the bark in trees. Yeah, but how do they get them out? Let's see. Well, what do you know? A woodpecker's tongue is long and sticky, so it can reach deep into trees and pull out insects. I'm having an engineering moment. Polos, back to the polo mobile. <laughs> Dickie! So you've made a woodpecker tongue? Right. I'm gonna fish out whatever's making the rattle the same way woodpeckers get bugs out of trees with something long and sticky. Uh, I think I got it! My maraca! I was looking for that! Thanks, Willow. Is that it? No more rattle? Only one way to find out. Tadpoles get older, they're gonna become froggies. Some animals, like frogs, have bodies that change from one form to another as they grow. That's called metamorphosis. Mother frogs lay eggs. When the eggs hatch, tadpoles come out. Tadpoles are baby frogs. Mmm. The tadpoles have long tails and live and breathe underwater, just like fish do. Uh huh. Fishies. Yeah. But watch this. As the tadpoles get older, their bodies change. Legs. Right. First, they grow their back legs and then their front legs. And they don't have to stay underwater all the time. They can come out on land. As they change, their tails get shorter and shorter until they look like that. Frogs are so cool. Yeah. Lion? 
change form as they grow, but you won't. You'll stay the same as you grow. Just like these animals. You'll just get bigger. No wings. No wings, but a much bigger you. Eh, just Nash? Yeah, always Nash, but bigger. Okay. <laughs> Like it. It would be nice to turn into a lion. Or to grow a tail. Or wings. Now that is cool. But Nash is going to stay Nash. And that's great. He's just going to get bigger. Yeah. Big Nash. See? Whoa. Whoa. It's a really big Nash. <laughs> <laughs> it says here that kangaroos and wallabies are related. Kind of like cousins. They're both herbivores. They eat plants. Right. And they both carry their babies in pouches. So, they're marsupials. But wallabies are much smaller. And they're totally not what we thought they were. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Aww. Nash, what's this? Nash hat. No, it's not. Hmm. Maybe it's a fan. Look! A koala! Wow! That must be a eucalyptus tree. Eucalyptus is really hard to digest. And for many animals, it's poisonous to eat. Koalas are one of the few animals that can eat its leaves. Look at this! That koala has a pouch with a joey. If it's got a pouch and a joey, it's a marsupial. Like kangaroos and wallabies. You know that koala looks just like my teddy bear. But koalas aren't bears. They're a completely different animal. Whoa, another Australian marsupial that's not what we thought. Hey, what is that? You know, I'm not really sure, but... It's not a fan. Hmm, maybe you play catch with it. This looks like a good place for a picnic. I've got everything we need right here. Whoa, check this out. Is that a mouse? And is it eating a flower? We've got to look it up. It's called a honey possum. It only eats the nectar and pollen from flowers. It's got a long tongue that fits deep into the flowers to get the nectar. Like a hummingbird. And guess what? Honey possums are totally marsupials. There are over 200 different kinds of marsupials in Australia. This one looks like a bear. But it eats grass like a cow. It's a wombat. Look at those teeth! That's a Tasmanian devil. They're meat eaters. And take a look at this one. It's a tree kangaroo. A kangaroo that lives in trees? Amazing! What are you guys doing? We're trying to play catch with this thing. But it's really not working very well. I thought it might be a fan. Do you know what it is? Yep. It's not a hat, Nash. It's a jar opener. Pickles, anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Just another thing in Australia that is not what we thought. That piece of wood is full of grooves. Do you think those insects made them? Like maybe they ate the wood? Let's find out what they are. They're termites. Too bad termites can't talk. They would have been close enough to see what happened to the picnic log. I don't think so. Most termites can't see. Actually,
Actually, I think we're just seeing a few termites. Look, termites live in colonies. There can be more than a million termites in a colony. A million? That's a lot. Around here, the colonies are underground. But in other places, they build these. They are oh, the The mounds are their nests. And at the center is the termite queen. It's her job to make sure that there are more and more termites. She is one big termite. It says that termite queens can grow to be as big as your thumb. She gets so big, she can't move around. So all of her children take care of her. So what do termites eat? Wood, right? It says here that most termites like to eat rotting wood from falling trees. That's one of the ways decomposition happens. Decomposition? What's that? That's when old rotting plants break down and return their nutrients back to the earth. So that new plants can grow. Hmm. I know what made the picnic log disappear. You figured it out? You know where the picnic log went? Yes. The amazing Lily will now amaze you by explaining the disappearing picnic log. Yay, amazing Lily! The picnic log was a fallen tree. Right. I just never thought of it that way. And fallen trees are the kind of rotting wood that termites like to eat. The termites made the picnic log disappear. They ate it. That's decomposition. Exactly. Now the only thing that's left of our whole picnic log is that one little piece of wood. And the termites are eating that too. That is Yay! amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So the disappearing picnic log isn't a magic trick after all. No, it's part of how nature works. I miss the picnic log, but I still like it here. It's nice to think that it's feeding other plants and animals so that they can live and grow. And speaking of feeding, picnic! And now I, the amazing Lily, will perform another amazing trick. I will now make the sandwich disappear. Huh? Oh, <laughs>